Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is absolutely incredible. Of course, we're going to be checking for a bunch of eggs today, uh, as well as the python eggs and stuff like that. But first, I want to head over to the reptarium. And obviously, you know, there's animals at the reptarium, so you never know what you're gonna get, right? I mean, you know, there's a million things. Uh, we all know that there's been times where I've left cages open and stuff like that. So that's one of the first things I do is make sure all the cages, the animals are in there. Of course, Ivy is chilling out in the back. I mean, it's so bizarre to, to see that. I don't know what she's doing. Uh, she seems to stay away from the water. Fish are looking good. And I literally do this every single morning where I just walk through, look in every single cage. You see, you know, number one, make sure the animals are find, you know, is there a shed? Is there something in the water? And I start to just kind of mentally tag as well as making some notes for Bruce and Jessica and Andrew and stuff like that. And just kind of really do that first visual appeal. And I've mentioned before, it's not just visual, it's also sometimes uh, the smell, right? You come in, if things smell right, which they do today, you know that's a good thing. If you smell, you know, maybe you left a rodent in or whatever the case may be. So the first thing I do every single day is just do that visual and mental surveillance of the entire place. Make sure all the the animals are good and hey I'll be totally honest with you it's cool you know I love coming in and being here alone and seeing the animals and just kind of looking around and seeing everything look at we've got kiwi out over here I'm sure mango is hanging out somewhere Ben and Jerry are looking amazing so uh, again I'll just do my kind of walk around see what's going on here and if anything's up we'll address it if not we'll go back and look for some eggs like I mentioned the other day my guy Nova here of course is just hanging out hey buddy what are you doing silly what are you doing honey <laughs> He's of course doing well, but Lilith is actually a little bit down too. She's loaded up with eggs. Well, I'm not going to make the mistake this time that we made last time where we lost that clutch of eggs because I don't know if Nova is being going to be a bad boy again or what's going to happen. So we're going to go ahead and get a nest box in with her right now. She's probably not due to lay for another week or so, although I think it is unusual that she's way down over here. Uh, so maybe she is looking for some. I don't know. Regardless, going to make up a nest box next door and bring it back over here and uh, make sure we get a good clutch of eggs from these guys. So I think this box is going to be perfect and what I want to do is put some uh, reptile prime coconut bedding probably like halfway down. I want her to be able to dig and feel comfortable uh, and I'm going to moisten that up. Keep that moist. I don't want it wet but I want it moist. Almost like a dirt consistency so that way uh, she has a lot to dig in. She's kind of impacting. She can bury them and stuff like that but obviously we need to cut a hole in this uh, just so she can get in and out. I don't know if this is going to work but we're going to give it a shot. My handy dandy knife here and I'm just going to kind of just cut a opening for her to get into so that she can go in here. Now, ultimately, a couple things will happen here. Number one, she's going to feel more comfortable, almost like she's going into a little cave, right? And then the other thing that happens when you cut uh, only a little hole in the top is that it's going to keep the humidity in because, again, we want that bedding to be relatively good. So not exactly the uh, most beautiful hole I've ever cut, but uh, this is going to work. And again, we'll go next door. We'll get some bedding in here, moisten it up, and then we can put this little bad boy in with Nova and Lilla. So I have some Reptile Prime right here, which by the way, you guys may not even know that uh, I have my own brand of bedding. It's coconut husk without dust in it. It's called Reptile Prime. You can check it out at reptileprime.com. I really never talk about it, but it's really great bedding. Absorbs really well, and that's what we're going to use on the bottom here. So we want to have, again, a pretty good layer here, you know, that she can dig in about half the thing. And then we're just going to take a sprayer and just mist it down. We'll mix it up really good, keep it kind of a little bit damp and stuff like that, and then uh, put it in there, and then hopefully she'll find it and uh, she'll go in here and feel comfortable and lay her eggs whenever she's ready. All right, all set. So all we have to do is just put this little guy right back here and we'll put it in this back corner because that's where Lilith typically likes to lay. We'll put it right back here and she's going to be curious. When she starts getting ready to lay, much like she's kind of searching around now, she's going to be looking for the best spot in this cage to lay. Because obviously, you know, Mother Nature doesn't want her to lay her eggs where they're not going to thrive. So that's going to be the most optimum spot, right? The temperatures are really good back there, right about 82 degrees. They've got that moist so the eggs don't dry out. It's going to be perfect. Plus, she kind of feels safe, like she's away from Nova and stuff like that. We'll just keep a really close eye on Nova. I doubt if he's going to go in there. And then hopefully within the next week or so, uh, we'll find some eggs. Yep, coming up on the middle of May, Michigan, spring, snow, beautiful.
And it is Kluber egg time. And you know, it uh, wouldn't be Kluber egg time without some help from Speedy. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. I'll see you in a little bit, all right? Let's go ahead and just jump right in. This is actually a head scaleless corn, but this is from that old group. Remember I always told you that the older group that we had, the fertility wasn't very good. So I never expect a lot of really good eggs, to be totally honest with you. But we'll see what happens. Oh, not too bad. I mean, definitely. Oh, gosh. Mama's not happy with me today. She gave me a little bit of a love kiss right there. That's okay, Mama. Get in there. We'll get her some water. And uh, and again, I always try to explain. We take the water out a day or two before they're going to lay because snakes sometimes will lay in the water. If they lay in the water, the eggs are no bad. Some people have commented like, why aren't there water in your snake's cages? We take them out. We put the water in right after they actually have eggs. Uh, so let's just go ahead and see what this mixed bag is right here. It looks like we have four slugs right here for sure. These are no good. And again, that's pretty typical for this old group. We don't have a lot of females that we breed from this group anymore, to be totally honest with you. Maybe about six or eight total. And then all the rest are new stuff that has really good fertility. So we have four good eggs, four bad eggs. Uh, again, about 50%. That's what I expect from that group. I could see phasing them out this year and probably not even breeding them in the future, to be honest with you. Yeah, just keep moving, Speedy. Always in my way, buddy. And last clutch is actually this Mexican black king snake here. Of course, look at how beautiful it is. It is funny how sometimes Mexican black kings, after they lay, they look so beat up. They put so much of their energy into egg production. And uh, although these eggs are very, very much dirty, it's just from the kind of dirt from this bedding, uh, they look perfectly good. There's definitely nothing wrong with them other than the fact that they're dirty. They should hatch completely fine. So let's go ahead, get these eggs in here. And uh, yeah, they look good. They, everything looks good. We got two four six seven pretty dirty eggs but i'm telling you they're going to be completely fine and they'll hatch out good just uh roll them around probably in this bedding right here that stains it that's the difference of not using sphagnum moss which by the way we uh got some sphagnum moss we appreciate you guys so now we can use sphagnum as our nest boxes but that wraps up the colubrid egg collecting for the day You guys know I'm always trying to bring you kind of deals and things that I really am passionate about. And every single day I do virtual tours. And the one thing that I use every single day and love are Raycon's Everyday E25. The thing I really like about this, while I'm showing off beautiful animals like Al Machino here, is the fact that I love underdogs. I love the fact that this company was built with underdogs that had a big dream. They wanted to create the next wave in true wireless technology with their suite of truly wireless audio products. And I gotta tell you, whether it's on a tour or whether I'm walking or running or I'm even trying to work out in my home gym, I always have these guys on. And I'm not just telling you that. These guys are truly amazing. They're comfortable. You know, hey, when you're dealing with snakes or reptiles in particular and you have wires, that's a problem. Get ripped out all the time. I love these things. And the thing that's really awesome is that they're really about half the price of some of the premium brands at the same exact quality. And right now, you can actually save 15% more by going to buyraycon.com slash Brian B. That's right by Raycon.com slash Brian B. Raycon earbuds start at about half the price of other premium wireless earbud brands. Sounds just as amazing as other top audio brands. Go to buyraycon.com slash Brian B to get 15% off your order. Thanks again for supporting companies that support us and that I believe in. Again, you can go to buyraycon.com slash Brian B to save 15% on your everyday E25s. Looks like a pretty good day. This girl here is actually laying eggs as we speak right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and just leave her be for a minute. Let's go ahead and collect a couple other clutches. We'll come back to her later on. Pretty awesome that we finally have a few clutches of ball pythons to pull. So here's the deal, guys. This particular female here, and I'm gonna pull this off right here. This girl, we've been waiting to lay eggs for a while now. She's about eight or nine days after her due date. I've always said that after the shed, they're about 30 days while they'll lay eggs. And a bunch of people 
people have asked me like, what happens if my ball python's 33 days in? This girl is almost at 40 days. So every single day, Jay and myself have come down here and been like, okay, is this girl gonna lay today? Is she gonna lay today? And she finally laid. Uh, so that just goes to show you that don't get that stressed out. 30 days is just a, a general thing. They'll lay anywhere from like 25 days. Sometimes they'll go as much as 40, 42 days. So don't panic about it because this girl finally laid. It's just a small little girl, but she sure is pretty. And it's actually bred to this Banana Extreme Enchi Pinstripe right here. So this is a ripper. It's got a lot of cool genetics in it. So let's go see how many eggs she has. And again, she's a relatively small girl. It's okay, mama. Let's go, you're good. Looks like she has maybe one bad egg in there, but for the most part, the rest of the eggs look pretty good. She's got them wrapped really tight, so she's definitely hanging on, being a really good mom for sure. Definitely rolling the eggs a little bit, so I'm gonna have to candle these. You always know that I candle them to try to make sure the embryo's on top, that air bubble, air sac's on top. Got a little boob egg here, no big deal. It looks like, again, when you see the paper that it actually adheres to on the top of the egg, that usually tells you it's been rolled, which is no big deal. Shouldn't be a problem with the egg at all. We'll just go ahead, get this thing all candled up. But she had four good eggs, one bad egg, not too bad, and again, don't panic if your ball python or any snake for that matter is a little overdue. It is rare for a snake to egg bind on the first egg. So usually an egg binding happens when they lay one, two, three eggs, then they bind up. So don't stress out. I mean, in all the years I've been doing this, I think I've only had one snake ever bind the entire clutch because you gotta remember that oviduct issue is usually happening further up, not right down by the vent, right? So uh, anyways, we have two more clutches to pull. I was so excited about this clutch right here. Look at that girl. This is just an absolutely beautiful bumblebee ball python. Let's just take a peek at her eggs. Okay, looks like again, one little slugger in there, but the rest of the eggs look really good. But she was bred to a banger male. And it's this male here. This is actually a pinstripe. It's a red stripe and it's a yellow belly. So those are three awesome mutations put together. Again, the red stripe stuff is really amazing and it's really something that has unlocked some amazing mutations like the Pompeii ball python. So the fact that we have this into that female that's a pattern a spider that is beautiful. That means we have five potential genes coming out. Let's see how many eggs she has. And again, mama, you did such a good job. Let's go ahead, just peel her off here real quick. Okay, I can see another little slugger in there, so that's not a good thing, but all in all, it looks like a pretty decent clutch. Let's see what she got. Woo! Not too bad. Again, two little slugs, but the other, oh, she just took a little pop at me. Mama, I know. She's like, Dad, you're not going to take those eggs away from me. She's being a good protective mama, which is what we really want from her anyways. Good job, Mom. You did such a good job. And these are beautiful eggs right here. Look at, we've got two, four, six beautiful eggs, a couple little sluggers. That happens from time to time. But nevertheless, that is a beautiful clutch of eggs and a potential for some crazy babies. I mean, I cannot wait till this clutch hatches. Again, only 56, 57 days we can cut these guys. But when they climb out of the egg, hoo hoo doggy, that's gonna be ridiculous. What's up, bud? I know that's a big piece, my bad, bud. I was going to cut that down a little bit. <laughs> Bruce just doing a little, uh, little socialization with his buddy Elvis over right here. <laughs> Looking good, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. I definitely need to trim the claws, though, man. Oh, he, got, he got a hold of me. I wasn't, wasn't too fond of that. I've lost too many shirts to that Oh, exactly. man, oh, my God. This is why Lori bought the Reptarium shirts, because like, yeah. we keep tearing them off all the time. Good job, Elvis. Get down, buddy. Way to go, bud. And this girl looks like she's completely done laying right now. She's actually just a yellow belly. Ow! Bit me, girl! Oh, let's get her off here real quick. She got wetness on the eggs now because I just spilled the water, so I gotta move quick. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I did that. I don't react that way typically. Oh, let's get these eggs out of here. All right, so basically I spilled the water when she bit me. You can see I'm bleeding just a little bit. I uh, just shouldn't have reacted that way, spilt it. Got some wetness on the eggs, so I definitely want to dry these eggs off with a towel just to be really safe. So let me go ahead and do this. But Mama is really upset. Mama, slow down, girl. Whoa! I tell you what, that girl is out of control. So she's a yellow belly. I'm going to dry these eggs off really quick.
I'm not gonna lie, that was a little bit of a rookie mistake. I don't typically do that. She just kind of got me off guard there. So she has two, four, six, eight, beautiful eggs and you can really see look at how this egg looks a little bit different and even the feel is different than these eggs right here i mean obviously you can't feel it but you can see how my finger is this is the last egg she laid and it isn't completely calcified so she probably laid that one within the last like five 10 minutes here in the next probably hour they'll look all the same this one's more pink this one's more yellowish white so these guys all change now that i have them dried off they should be good let me show you the banger male i bred her to and this is the boy here he's unfortunately in shed he's so beautiful when he's not it's actually an extreme gene banana spider ball python you can see that reduction of pattern when he's not a shed he is so gorgeous and again it's a yellow belly female so i could get all kinds of combinations thereof so uh that wraps up ball python eggs for today but i'd say we had a pretty good haul today. With all the snake eggs, you know that snake egg cutting is coming soon. I think we're about three weeks away from our first clutch that we can actually cut. If you guys need your snake egg cutting fix right now, you can check out this playlist. Tons of snake egg cutting there. You can also pay some attention to my podcast channel called Checking In. Right up there, you can subscribe. On this side, you can actually subscribe to the vlog channel. I sure do appreciate that. Have an absolutely wonderful day. Remember to be kind to someone, and I promise I'll see you guys tomorrow.